Today is Memorial Day, the last Monday in May. It is the day that our country has set aside to give reverence and honor to those men and women who answered our country's call to duty and gave the supreme sacrifice to ensure our liberty as Americans. Today, as we celebrate what has become the unofficial start of the summer vacation season, Let us take a moment to reflect on those brave men and women who died defending our country during our nation's wars on domestic and foreign soil. The Civil War. The Spanish-American War. World War I. World War II. Korea. Vietnam. Beirut. Mogadishu. The Persian Gulf. Iraq. Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Many of the veterans returning home from these wars carried with them the scars and visions of seeing their fellow servicemen and service women being killed in action. My own father, Emil William Bill Barron, was one of those returning veterans. He was a member of the U.S. Navy who joined the service in September 1943 and earned the rank of Aviation Radio Man 2nd Class. He was a member of the famous VB-80 Dive Bomber Squadron based on the USS Ticonderoga. On the afternoon of January 21, 1945, the Big T, as she was known to her crew, was struck at 12.30 p.m. local time by a single Japanese kamikaze pilot and plane. 100 sailors were killed in action during that attack. These were young men, barely out of their teens when they died. They had just finished breakfast when the plane hit. Four hours later, my father was helping to bury at sea the dead bodies of his fellow sailors. They were more than just crew members to dead. They were his friends. He met many of them during boot camp. Others he met during flight training at the Naval Air Station in Wildwood, New Jersey. Most of the sailors he couldn't identify. They were just so badly burned. So he had to depend on their dog tags for identification. He just had enough time to put on an American flag on the uniforms and pull one of the dog tags of the remains and give it to the ship's chaplain so that the next of kin could be notified. Then he helped wrap them in a makeshift body bag and drop them into the sea, where they still remain, right now, today, in honored glory, in a place known only to God. My dad's deceased shipmates did not get a chance to witness the end of World War II on September 2, 1945, or a chance to go home to their loved ones or to go to college, or get a job, or own a business, or get married to that special girl that they left behind, or having children and raising a family. We who graduated in high school in the mid-1970s are the beneficiaries of those who survived and came home, our own fathers and mothers. They worked hard for us. They gave us a good home put us in the best schools possible, and gave us an opportunity to be successful. This was a promise made by them, the greatest generation, to those that died in the war that the next generation of American sons and daughters would grow up in a better and stronger America. Today, our own sons and daughters have answered our country's call to duty. And for some, this has been a very difficult decision especially for those who have only one son or daughter. We must take the time and effort to thank these friends and support them for this hard but noble decision that they have made. In recognition of his brave actions during the Manila campaign and the attack on the Ticonderoga, my father was awarded the U.S. Navy Air Medal from James Forrestal, Secretary of the Navy under the orders of the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt.
May God bless my late father, Emil William Bill Barron, my late uncle, Alfred George Barron, both U.S. Navy seamen. May God bless my late grandfather, Major John H. Jernigan, U.S. Army. May God bless the armed services and all the men and women in uniform who have served our country faithfully since the American Revolution. God bless those men and women who have paid the supreme sacrifice for our freedom. And God bless the United States of America. Remember, this is Memorial Day. Keep it sacred.